I've got a gadget I am really excited to try into the test center this week, and that's because it's something I already use every day. So if they can make an improvement on it, I'm super stoked to try it. It's a hairdryer, but not just any hairdryer. This is the Dyson Supersonic hairdryer. You can already see it looks very different than conventional blow dryers, and that's in part because the motor is not in the head of the dryer like it is with traditional hair dryers. It's down here in the handle. So that allows it to have a bit more of an ergonomic weight to it. So when you're blow drying for long periods of time, it's not going to pull on you. The weight is more balanced in your hand. This device is also packed with other technology that I'm gonna take a look at. I'm gonna do some timed tests as well to see if it can really dry your hair significantly faster than a traditional dryer. So come on, check it out with me as I put it through the paces. The Dyson Supersonic has 1600 watts of power. You can find that in plenty of other hair dryers, both professional level and at the drugstore. It weighs in at about 830 grams. I would definitely not call it heavy, but it's not super light either. Also packed in here is ionic technology, which uses negative ions to keep static and frizz to a minimum. I wouldn't say this hair dryer is whisper quiet, but it's not super loud either. It's kind of somewhere in the middle. In terms of controls, on the left here are the airflow settings. There's three different levels from low to high, and then on the right, three different heat settings. You can also turn the heat right off if you basically just want to give your hair a cool blast. Two magnetically attached nozzles come in the box. On the left, the smoothing nozzle, which is meant for lower velocity airflow, and on the right, the styling concentrator, which is said to be for faster, more precise airflow for controlled styling section by section. How does the Dyson Supersonic compare to my old dryer? Well, the difference is obvious. You can see the old dryer is significantly longer, but once you turn each dryer on its end, it's a little less noticeable. I think the Dyson's diameter is about eight centimeters. My old hair dryer is about 10. At the risk of jumping ahead and spoiling the surprise, where you will see a huge difference is in the time it takes to dry your hair. Okay, so the hair is washed, it's wet. Uh, I haven't done much aside from just towel dry it. I'm going to run a timer on this as well to see how long it takes the Dyson to dry my hair. Um, last time I was trying this, the phone ran out of memory, so I wasn't able to get a good time on it. So I'm running a backup timer here for full reporting. Okay, so I'm actually going to stop right here for just a minute because uh, my timer says just under two minutes and my hair is mostly dry. Um, I, I'm, a, I'm obviously going to want to do a little bit of styling to it and some smoothing, which I'll do in just a sec. But in essence, um, my hair mid-length dry in about two minutes. That's pretty impressive. Okay, so still got a little to do here in terms of just styling and smoothing. Um, but that by my count is just about, I'm gonna say five and a half minutes, five minutes, 30 seconds. And my hair is basically dry, styled, and just needs a little bit of finishing with my flat iron that I would ordinarily do anyway. So I feel like I have a lot of extra time. I'm gonna run a couple more tests with my regular blow dryer and just see if the Dyson really is significantly faster or all this time I've been drying my hair with my old dryer and it actually wasn't taking me that long anyway. So that's the next test. So I'm back today. I am going to try my old Conair dryer to dry my hair and do a timed test just to see exactly how long it takes me to do it with this version compared to the Dyson. So I'm stopping again because I'm a bit shocked to find that two minutes, 40 seconds or so. And again, my hair for the most part is dry, obviously needs to be styled and done and smooth. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. Um, but that's only slightly longer than the time I got on the Dyson dryer. So that's actually interesting. I've never timed how long it takes me to dry my hair. So I think my existing dryer was actually doing not a bad job. So that's interesting, but we'll see how it goes uh, and how long it takes me to do the rest of my styling. Okay. 
So stopping again here, after all my drying and smoothing um, and finishing, we're up to just over seven minutes. So that's where I'm going to stop the timer. Um, obviously, like the last test I did with the Dyson, I still want to go in with my straightener and do some smoothing and styling with it. But um, seven, just over seven minutes to do it with my regular dryer versus I think about five and a half with the Dyson. So the Dyson is definitely saving a couple of minutes. Is that significant enough for a lot of people? That's up to you guys. Um, one of the things I did notice though is that when I was using the Dyson yesterday, actually I guess when I was using this dryer today, I feel really hot. Um, I'm kind of sweaty, my makeup's running a bit, um, there's just a lot of heat coming out of that dryer blasting around on me and after seven minutes you really start to feel it. The other thing I noticed was um, if you ever dry your hair and you get almost that smoky thing that happens when you uh, get the dryer a little too close to your head. So I had that happen today with this dryer, the old dryer. Didn't have that happen with the Dyson. So that's pretty interesting as well. Overall, I really liked the Dyson Supersonic experience. I liked the fact that it was quicker than my old dryer and generated less heat. I also felt like my hair was a lot softer and smoother after being dried with the Dyson. Plus, I liked that it wasn't scorching my hair. If I were to make any improvements to this device, it would probably be to make it quieter and get rid of the annoyingly large electrical box on the cable. Now, obviously, I'm not an engineer, and I don't know if these are even realistic suggestions, but from a consumer standpoint, those are my thoughts. So would I buy this hairdryer for myself? Man, I really want to, but not right now. The time savings for me are just not significant enough to justify the $500 price tag. And I also think that if a Generation 2 version might come out in the next couple years, it might have some of the improvements I'm hoping for. The bottom line here is if you can afford this hair dryer and you've got lots of hair or your lifestyle is such that a few minutes are worth getting back, you're definitely going to love it. The Dyson Supersonic sells for $4.99 Canadian or $3.99 US from Dyson's websites. Don't forget that the full review is online on my website at erinlyyc.com. You can ask me questions you have about the Dyson Supersonic there or here on YouTube in comments below. I'd love to hear from you. You can also find me and reach out on Twitter or Instagram at erinlyyc. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you back here again soon.